Manhattan attorney who investigated Donald Trump and his organization's business dealings is speaking out. Frustrated the former president was not indicted in that case. Now in his new book, the former prosecutor Mark Pomerantz says the evidence he had access to would have easily resulted in charges against anyone else. Take the exact same conduct uh, and make it not about Donald Trump and not about a former president of the United States. Would the case have been indicted? It would have been indicted in a flat second. Bring in CNN's Kara Scannell, who's tracking this investigation. Kara, that's pretty strong words from the prosecutor, Mr. Pomerantz, their former prosecutor. Uh, what critical points did he make in this interview? Yeah, so this was his first television interview since he resigned in protest last year after the incoming DA, Alvin Bragg, stopped him from pursuing an indictment against the former president. Now, in this interview, Pomerantz also says that refusing to move forward with those charges was a grave failure of justice. He said he believed that they had bits and pieces of evidence that would tie Trump to these alleged crimes. Uh, now, he was, he did not, um, that was not a universal view within the DA's office. Several prosecutors resigned from the team because they thought they were moving too far ahead. And, you know, sources told us last year. And in addition, other experienced career prosecutors on that team also thought that they didn't have enough evidence to prove that Trump had criminal intent in the preparation of these financial statements. Now, some of these bits and pieces of evidence have come out in the New York Attorney General's civil lawsuit against the former president and his family members, you know, in that she had alleged that they had engaged in a decade-long fraud by manipulating the value of many assets on the company's financial statements, and the Trumps have denied any wrongdoing. Uh, but, you know, that Bragg has said that he believes those career prosecutors, he thought more work needed to be done, and he said that Pomerantz's plane was not ready for takeoff. Now, the former president's attorney has said that Pomerantz's statements are a desperate attempt to uh, sell this book. Uh, now, one thing that Bragg and Trump agree on is that no one wanted this book published. John? Uh, the prosecutor certainly doesn't want to publish in the middle of an ongoing investigation. Kara Scannell, grateful of the important reporting. Let's get some perspective. CNN Legal National Security Analyst Kerry Cordero is back with us. And let's listen, because in the 60 Minutes interview, uh, Bill Whitaker asked a key question. How strong is the evidence tying this to Donald Trump? So what ties Donald Trump directly to this? I mean, you, you know, couldn't he say, my accountant said it's, it's worth this, I signed it. There were many bits and pieces of evidence on which we could rely in making that case. It's an interesting choice of words, many bits and pieces. Normally, in a case, you'll have a prosecutor say the evidence was overwhelming or it was a slam dunk. Bits and pieces. Do, yeah. you, bring a, do you bring a case against anyone, uh, but a, or especially the former president, if you have bits and pieces? Yeah, normally prosecutors would not get too excited about bringing a case based on bits and pieces. What they want to be able to do is bring an indictment based on a case that they are, uh, have, have a large amount of evidence that they feel can convince a jury. And it's really not ethically responsible to bring a case unless they have confidence that they can actually win it. Uh, and there's a real irony he, here as well. Um, presumably, this case is still ongoing in some way uh, in New York. And the fact that a prosecutor who has knowledge and access to what the evidence was is now publishing a book um, and presumably profiting off of that inside information for an ongoing case, not a case that is over, has been disposed of, was prosecuted in the past, and you know, prosecutors write about the cases that I did way back when. This is very different. This is something that's ongoing. So I think there's a real sort of ethical issue there as well. Uh, and to that ethical issue, is it obviously if there were a non-disclosure agreement or something in a contract, it would, you couldn't publish the book. Obviously, there's nothing there. Just well, a judgment call. he was able to do it. It's a judgment yeah. call. Um, and so, so that's what's happened. But look, prosecutors disagree about the, the weight of a case all the time. Ultimately, in this situation, it's the DA's call. You know, just on the federal side, Justice Department attorneys can disagree about whether a case should be brought or not. It's the attorney general's call. In this case, the DA made a decision. That's the DA's job. I bet the book's going to sell. We'll see how the investigation goes from there. So that prosecutor, Mark Pomerantz, resigned in protest a year ago when his office didn't move to indict Trump. But here is what the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, told CNN about those accusations. He says, after closely reviewing all of the evidence from Mr. Pomerantz's investigation, I came to the same conclusion as several senior prosecutors involved in the case and also those I brought on. More work was needed. Put enough 
another way, Mr. Pomerantz's plane wasn't ready for takeoff. Here to discuss all of this is CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Elliot Williams. Elliot, um, this is obviously uh, a, a person who is selling a book, but on the substance of the of the allegations here, is there a, a difference of opinion here, just two prosecutors differing on how to proceed, or is Pomerantz right that Trump uh, got special consideration because he's a former president. I think you touched right on it, Abby, by saying there's a difference of opinion. And you see this all the time, look, in workplaces around the country, but particularly prosecutors' offices around the country. Now, look, let's be clear. Mark Pomerantz in this book makes an incredibly compelling case for charging former President Trump with a crime. But there's a, there's a few problems that get glossed over, frankly, in, this, in, the, in the 60 Minutes interview. Number one, so much of this attention focuses on Alvin Bragg, the current district attorney, but they don't really, he doesn't really talk about um, Cyrus Vance, the former district attorney who had the case going back to 2019. So if there was such a groundswell of support for charging it, why didn't they do it back then? So, you know, there's a lot of blame to go around here. And two, a, a really important point here is that there, if you read the book, there wasn't clear consensus, I believe, in the office as to whether to charge. Now, certainly Pomerantz and one of his colleagues felt very strongly that charges should have proceeded, but there were others in the office who didn't. And so, you know, I don't think it's just a, a difference of two people's opinion. I think it was a complicated decision that this office was grappling with and that, you know, one of the very senior and frankly, very accomplished attorneys just doesn't agree with the decision that got made. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like the bar, uh, in order to obtain a conviction of a former president, certainly needs to be uh, ironclad evidence. But uh, the current Manhattan DA at the moment seems to be much more focused and interested in Trump's alleged role in these hush money payments that were made to Stor Stormy Daniels. Now, uh, I, I guess the question is, could that just be an easier case to prove? And if it is, why? Yes and no. I think uh, to some extent it's an easier case to prove because you have more witnesses. Number one, you have Stormy Daniels herself who would likely come forward to testify. Number two, you have Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer and former fixer. The challenge with Michael Cohen is he's already got a perjury conviction and is sort of a, for lack of a better term, dirty witness. I think he'd get beaten up. Now, what you do have in the Stormy Daniels case is a number of checks that were signed, these hush money payments, I believe, frankly, even with I believe with the former president's signature himself. So you have some uh, evidence tying him to the actual crime that might have been more complicated in a vast real estate valuation scheme. But it's just hard to know if none of us have seen sort of the, the case files that both of all these prosecutors have. But it's hard to know ex exactly why one case is, seems to be moving forward and one isn't. Yeah, it's a fascinating dispute playing out in public here. Not very typical to see something like that happen. Elliot Williams, thank you.